Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Obtain, Evaluate, and Communicate Information. Level 1, Obtain and Describe Information. You can see in the box that we have quite a few texts, and we're going to look at those in just a second. And so as you look at text, and text can be words, but also can be media like photographs or videos, first thing you want to determine is what is the phenomena that I'm better understanding by looking at this text. So identify the information that's coming in, but what's the phenomena that you're trying to better understand? And then taking in information, you really go through three steps. The first thing you do is you obtain or receive information and then in your brain what you're going to do is you're going to evaluate that information or make sense of the information and then the last thing you do is you communicate that information and so this is a taking it in making sense of it and then eventually communicating it the information that we'll be dealing with in this video is informative information so it's designed to be given from one person to the receiver and we're going to be looking at what are called informative text and so informative text is designed just to uh, go from whoever writes it to whoever receives it. And then it could also be media. So it could be video, it could be multimedia. But one of the tools that we use are called text features or media features to make sense of it. So after watching this video, you should be able to obtain, evaluate, and communicate information on objects like these books on trucks or video like this cardinal parent feeding its offspring. I'm going to start by showing you how I do this with some text around polar bears, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with trains. And so let me clean this up, and then we'll get started. Okay, so you can see that based on the text that I have in front of me, there's a common theme. So let me write down what the phenomena is. So the phenomena that I'm going to gather more information on is the polar bear. Um, the first thing I want to do is determine of these texts that I have, are these both informative texts? And so that means it's text that's designed to give you information. And one really big indicator of that is that informative texts always are nonfiction. And so if I look at this text here, this is Polar Bear, Polar Bear. This is one of my favorite books that I was able to read to my kids. So it's got information on a polar bear, hearing a lion. It's got some drawings. And then if I remember at the end, you have a zookeeper and then you have a polar bear growling like a polar bear. And so as I look at this, as I'm obtaining information on this, I don't think this is an informative text. I don't think it's designed to give us information. I don't think it is nonfiction. And so I don't think this would be a good text to use this practice on. So I'm just going to remove this. As I look at the next one, now we're looking at this text that deals with polar bears. As I open it up, I can see that there's a title. And then one of the big features that I see right away, informative text features, is a table of contents. So that indicates that this is like organizing the information, there's information on a bear. You also see some other text features like titles. You see little call outs and photographs. And so I think this is a pretty good informative text. So I want to grab some information from this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write down more about the text so that I can cite this. Okay, so what is the text? This is Polar Bears by National Geographic Kids, and then the author is Laura Marsh. So I'm going to write that off to the side. Now the next thing I want to do is start obtaining information. So I'm obtaining or gathering information from the text. And so I'm just going to go through and write some of the things that I notice as I look through, as I better understand polar bears. So let me find something interesting. So the first information I'm gathering is that polar bears paws have long thick claws. You can kind of see them right here. And those are used to grab food. Let me, I think this is kind of an interesting page. So let me write down a little bit more information from this. Okay, so two things I notice is that the large bar, the large paws keep the bear from sinking in the snow, and their front paws are webbed, kind of like a duck, so they can swim. And so I'm going to update my phenomena. 
So now my, my phenomena is going to be polar bear pause. I'm interested in that. And now the next thing I want to start doing is starting to evaluate the information because I'm eventually going to want to communicate this information to someone else. And so as I look at this, I can see all the structures that they have, but I really want to connect that to like their function. And I think one big thing that I noticed as I was looking through the text is that they're really designed to live in the Arctic. So I think that would be an important bit of information. So let me add that. Okay, so the last bit of information I said is that polar bears have special structures that allow them to live in the Arctic. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna really evaluate this information. And so I'm gonna start organizing this. And so I think that might be the most important thing. So I'm gonna start by saying that's how I would start communicating information. So maybe I would start with that. And then I might think of uh, what are some of the more interesting things I found, this idea that they have webbed feet and that they're big and that they have claws. And so what I'm doing here is just organizing that because I'm going to want to communicate that information. And so what I did again is I took in information from the text. I evaluated that. I'm looking at which information is important and how would I organize that? For me, the structures is a really good way to organize it. And now I'm ready to communicate that information. So how do I communicate it? I could communicate it through text. So I could write out a summary or I could just do it orally. And so if I were to do it just orally, I would say something like this. According to Polar Bears by Laura Marsh at Nat Geo, polar bears have special structures that allow them to live in the Arctic. For example, their front paws are webbed like a duck for swimming. They have large paws that keep the bear from sinking in the snow. And polar bears have long, thick claws to grab the food. And so that's me taking in information and evaluating it, and now I'm describing or communicating that information. So I, I've done that. What I'd love to have you do, I'm gonna clean this up, and I'm gonna give you a couple of texts and I would have you do the same and then we'll see how our ideas compare. Okay, for the next one, you can see I've got a couple of text here. One's called Trains by Eye Openers and then another one is the little engine that could. And so let me define what the phenomena is. And now what I'd love to have you do is pause the video and then I want you to go through, identify, all right, is one of these informative text or both? Then obtain some information that you think is interesting, evaluate that information, and then communicate the information. Then unpause, and then we'll see how our thinking combines. I'll link up sections of these uh, books down below so you can use those as you do your own. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna look at is you're gonna to try to evaluate if these are both informative texts. Remember, informative texts are designed to give you factual information. And so if we look at the first one, which is on trains, one of the big things you'll have is a table of context in informative texts. I don't see that, but we've got information on text. Steam engine's very old, you put coal in it. High-speed trains travel very fast. You can see that as we look through this, this is just giving us information about different trains and how those different trains work. And so as I look at this, I think this is uh, informative text. If we look at the next one, this is maybe something you're familiar with, The Little Engine That Could. There's a book about, how does this work, I think? There's like a red train that gets stuck. And then all these other trains or engines come by, and eventually I think it's the blue engine that gives them a ride up and over. And I think there's that famous, like, I think I can, I think I can, wherever that is. So anyway, so I think I can, I think I can. As I look at this, I can see that this gives us information about trains, but it's not designed to give us information, it's a story. And so I would not include this, and so I'm gonna get that out of the way. And then remember, I wanna cite the information where I'm gathering it. So I want to write that down over here. All right, so the title is Trains. This is by Little Simon, and there's no one author, so I just use the last names, Oliver, Watson, Hopkins, and Taylor, and so I'm citing that. And then the next thing I want to do is just start looking through and seeing what is some information that I would like to obtain from this. I knew a little bit about steam engines and high-speed trains. I've seen these. 
But maybe this is interesting to me. So the crocodile train, maybe I'm interested, I don't know what that is, and I wanna gather or obtain some information from that. So let me change my phenomena. And now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start taking in information. So the text features are going to be on this page, things like the title, these little illustrations, we've got a model of a train, so I can gather that from this. So what I'm gonna do is just write down what I think are some of the more interesting bits of information as I pull it from the text. Okay, so you saw me adding information. Uh, one thing I was curious about, because it doesn't tell me what a pantograph is, but I was interested in that. And you can see that I had to look at, use this to go back and see, are there other trains that have a pantograph? And then noticing from the illustration that there's an electrical wire. So you have to evaluate that information. And so now I think I've gathered a lot of information, but I want to communicate that information. And so as I do that, I want to kind of put it in the order. I think people would be most interested in like how, how that works, what their job is, a crocodile train. And then I like maybe this, I like the order that it's actually in. And so now I'm ready, I've evaluated the information. I'm saying, what's the most important information? Sometimes I would rearrange that, but I think I'm ready to communicate information. And so I could do this in a written statement or written text, or I could just do it orally. So let me go through. According to Trains Little Simon by Oliver Watson, Hopkins, and Taylor, the crocodile train pulls train cars up into the mountains. It has a long engine that bends on each side, and this allows the engine to get around steep and rocky corners. And then on the top of the train, I might want to add that in here, pantographs connect the engine to electrical wires. And so this is how you do uh, obtain, evaluate, and communicate information. First step is always, do I have an informative text? And you can use features to do that. And this doesn't work just for informative text, but could be media as well. Then you obtain, you evaluate it, you think about how do I want to describe it, and then eventually you communicate it. So now that I've done that with, with trains, what you could go through, and I've got some other ones down below, so you could look at um, dump truck, uh, either the little dump truck or this book on trucks, or you could start looking at media. I've got some text and a video around cardinals feeding themselves. But that is level one, obtain, evaluate, and communication. All we're really trying to do is to obtain and then describe the information, and I hope that's helpful.